you know, the more I think about it, who is going to challenge USC? Not just on the field, but in recruiting. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. I'm your host, Mark Holkin, and wherever you are catching this podcast, it is free. So whether you're watching on YouTube or wherever down you download those things, uh, you're always going to get your Trojan information for free. And if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Both of those will mean a whole heck of a lot to the show. And because I come at you five times a week, Monday through Friday, Hit that bell notification button. All right. So I asked the question at the top, who's going to challenge USC on the field as well as in recruiting? Well, I'm going to talk about both on this episode of Locked on USC. We're heading into the uh, into the summer months, and this is typically when things tend to slow down. Not if you're a fan of USC recruiting. So let's start with, Who's feeling blessed? Who's the most recent players to get a USC offer? I got a list for you. So while it does look like USC took a day off from uh, making any announcements as far as, you know, getting any commitments, I didn't see any bat signals go up, no no Trojan signal, no fight-ons, and uh, there were no championships won today. I did, uh, I did fail to mention the women's lacrosse team, they also won a championship over the weekend. It wasn't just the women's beach volleyball team. So fight on. You have two more national champions at USC. So again, while there were no commitments, uh, football or basketball for that matter, there were still a lot of offers going out. So I checked and here's a list I put together. So for all of you who like to get all of your news and notes and information in one place, I got it for you right now. I see that a 2020, 2026 prospect, his name is Caleb Tafua. He's out of Lakewood, California. He was uh, extremely blessed to receive an offer. And he made sure to point out that, um, that he uh, is looking to continue his education and his dreams at the University of Southern California. We'll see what happens. He's a way down the line. Again, class of 2026. A little bit closer, um, recruiting for 2024. And this is gonna be, again, a position of need. It's on defense. Obina Anwuka, defensive end. He's an edge guy from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. He told Roy Manning that he's gonna be at USC on May 20th, the weekend of for his visit. So uh, he wants to make a commitment. He wants to make his commitment to whatever school he's going to choose on July 1st. Now, Maryland, the University of, they play in the Big Ten Conference. So that could give USC a little bit of leverage uh, if distance isn't an issue. And I guess he'll be able to figure that out when he takes his visit uh, May 20th in a couple of weeks. Right now, it appears that Boston College and West Virginia seem to be the, the leaders in the clubhouse. So we'll see what kind of impression uh, USC makes on the young man from that DMV area that USC has recruited really well. Another edge guy, class of 2025, Chris Burgess Jr. out of Simeon High School, Chicago, Illinois. Six foot five, 240 pounds. Edge player, he got his he got an offer from USC, and I'm starting to sense a trend here with the offers that have been going out recently. Uh, they're going to a lot of guys who are used to different weather, different climates. Look, I don't think it's going to play a huge role um, when USC makes the move to the big conference, but recruiting needs to adjust for. You know the type of the type of play that um, you see more accustomed to the Big Ten than what USC would see more frequently playing the Pac-12. 
yes, it's a passing league. Uh, the, the game has turned into more of a passing game across the country. However, I still think Big Ten is known for um, wanting to run the ball, wanting to be physical in the trenches, which is, uh, I guess, a perfect opportunity to take the time to look at running back Brian Jackson, McKinney, Texas. He looks like your prototypical Big Ten running back. He's big, tall, fast. And uh, Ulysses already has a commitment from Brian Jackson. Well, he might be getting a uh, he might be getting another Texas running back joining him. As I mentioned, this young uh, running back, his name is Taylor Tatum. You probably heard the name I've mentioned him before. Well, here's a quick update. He's taking his official visit on the weekend of June 2nd. And that's going to be one of the two major hosting weekends that USC is planning to do in June. The other one being the weekend of June 16th through the 18th. Taylor Tatum is a running back from Longview, Texas. He's RSVP'd. He's going to be attending the uh, June 2nd weekend. If you haven't seen this guy's tape, I encourage you to spend some time on YouTube looking it up. Uh, he can run the rock. He has that it factor. Uh, Oklahoma is really hot and bothered. They want him big time. Uh, but they're running a distant second for Tatum's commitment after USC, according to their uh, recruiting prediction machine from on three. Here are some numbers from Tatum in 2022. He rushed for 1,850 yards, 33 touchdowns, and he averaged 141 yards per game going against some of the strongest competition in the state of Texas. Uh, he also had three receiving touchdowns. Quote from his uh, head coach, his high school head coach, he can do a little bit of everything. Uh, not only does he run the ball, but he'll block, he can catch it, he can play in the slot. He had 28 carries in the state quarterfinals, and according to the head coach, John King, they needed every one of them because uh, that's how impactful of a player he is. And he uh, apparently he comes from a really good family, high-character young man. And as I've told you, the first thing the football staff was looking at is character over talent. If you get both, hey, best of both worlds. So I'm not going to be surprised uh, if that uh, Trojan bat signal shows up in the sky on Twitter sometime during his visit or shortly thereafter. There's a lot of confidence that USC is going to get him as well. Uh, some other guys who are going to be visiting June 2nd, big weekend, cornerback Zabian Brown from Modern Day. USC really needs to keep that pipeline flowing. Zabian Brown is a guy I know USC wants. Another cornerback, Dakota Field, Gardena Serra. He'll be on USC that weekend visiting. Here's a name, Jordan Johnson Rubel, a safety prospect, IMG Academy. And then another local kid. And I know this has been this is a program that USC really needs to get back in. St. John Bosco at least on the defensive side of the ball. Kingston Viliamu Asa. We've heard the name, and I didn't butcher it this time, linebacker. This is a must-keep guy, must-keep at-home guy, period. Um, Jordan Lockhart is another linebacker from Bosco. Those two guys, USC needs to keep, they need, they need to keep them at home. Regardless, Kingston is going to be visiting the weekend of June 2nd. Caleb Red, edge player out of the state of Missouri, and Isaiah Garcia, the offensive lineman from Magna, Utah. And then I told you about this guy on yesterday's episode of Locked on USC. You can go back and check it. Walter Matthews, he's a tight end. He has USC and Florida in his top two. He's going to be visiting that weekend. And despite being from the state of Georgia, USC and Florida. Those are the, that's what USC is competing for, or care, competing against. And then another guy, four-star edge, Cameron Fountain. He's another player out of the state of Georgia. 
Atlanta. <coughs> so, as you can see, USC's uh, reach is hitting everywhere. Not just California. They're going into Texas, hitting the East Coast. They're going into the Southeast. Wherever they can play, find players that can improve the roster, that's what's most important. And this list is going to continue to update, and I'll do my very best to keep everybody updated with the inside scoop. That's why you make Locked on USC your first listen every day. And when you're not listening to Locked on USC, when you're done here, you're heading over to WeRSC.com, where I do a lot of my writing, and I'll keep you updated there as well. But before you head on over anywhere, I want you to head on over to FanDuel. Right now, you need to make a fast break to FanDuel. We're in the NBA playoffs. And because right now, if you're a new customer, you can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. If you're a loser, you're a winner. Lakers, round two. I'm not sure how they're doing against Golden State in game four. Let me know. Anyways, um, wherever you want to, uh, whichever team you're following, there's no better place to bet all of your playoff action than with America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. And again, you can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So at the very top of the show, I asked you, who's going to challenge USC? Well, I went over the list of recruits and offers that are planning to visit, that USC's handed out offers to. Who's going to challenge USC on the field? Well, in 2023, I can tell you it's not going to be the San Jose State Spartans. That's who the Trojans open up the season with. I've been going back and forth, talking about some of the Pac-12 teams, picking a team from the North Division, from the South. Figured, let's step out of conference. Let's talk about the Spartans. Well, let's just be honest here. No offense to any Sparty fan out there. This literally needs, should be, and needs to be one of those one of those old-fashioned, sacrificial lamb type of scores. When you look up at the scoreboard at the end of the game, USC needs to have 60 plus points on the scoreboard. And the backups should be putting up the scores at the end of the game. Look, I, I, this is another reason why this game needs to have some cosmetic scores. Uh, when San Jose State limps home, they're going to be hosting Oregon State the following week. So USC needs to send a message. Uh, if you remember last year, Oregon State, uh, they played USC very tough. Uh, that was on the road in Corvallis, which has always been a nightmare place for USC to play. Nevertheless, uh, I think it's important that USC sends San Jose State home with a big, fat paycheck, but a big, fat butt whooping to go with it. <laughs> and then let's see what Oregon State can do. If Oregon State um, can play on the road, and and give San Jose State a bigger beatdown than, than USC does at home in the Coliseum, we might be having a different discussion. But I don't foresee that happening, as well as I just don't see San Jose State putting up much of a fight. With that said, they did get uh, some transfers through the transfer portal um, that came from Power 5 schools. Former Oregon Duck, four, I think it was a four- or five-star quarterback, Jay Butterfield. Well, he's transferred to San Jose State, and he's going to be competing for the starting job. Some of you who follow recruiting, you might recognize the name DJ Harvey. He, uh, he started his career at Virginia Tech, defensive back. He's coming back home to California. He's going to play for the Spartans. You're also going to recognize this name. Former Trojan safety, Chase Williams. Well, he is a San Jose State Spartan. We're going to see how he does trying to defend USC wide receivers. Speaking of wide receivers, San Jose State, they lost a player, Isaiah Hamilton, to, to Wazoo, the Cougars. 
So they had some talent on this team. And I think wide receiver actually might be the Spartans' strongest position, at least on offense. Another name, if you are if you follow 7-on-7 seven seven and follow recruiting, Isaac Jernigan uh, and Kiwan Bullard. Those are a couple of guys who play wide receiver for San Jose State, and they could get loose if USC's defense is playing loose. Those are guys that you don't want to, you know, you don't want to mess around with. Don't give Sparty any idea that, hey, our passing game is working. We got a chance here. Cut them off of the chase. Uh, don't let them even think they have a chance to play. Like I said, this is game one. Caleb Williams, he can... I'm sure San Jose State's going to put up a fight to the best of their abilities, but Caleb should be able to put up 300 yards and four touchdowns by halftime. And then call it a day. I want to see Miller Moss. I want to see the backups playing in the second half. Because you're going to need these guys at some point during the season. Injuries happen. Who can play when the lights are on? Let's find out. I'll say this. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of their head coach, Brent Brennan. Uh, a couple of years ago, he really had those guys playing to their fullest potential. They made it to a bowl game. And they, I think they're going to have their stadium renovations completed. So, uh, again, when Oregon State shows up the following week, they'll, you know, they might be playing in front of what 35, 40,000 fans. Who knows? The fact that they can get a Pac-12 team, not named Stanford or Cal, to uh, to visit San Jose State, I think that's a step up for the program. I don't, but again, a step up for the program is beating an Oregon State. A step up playing at the Coliseum is keeping the game close. And I just can't see that happening. Not with this USC offense in 2023. Um, tomorrow's episode, I'll talk about Nevada, the Wolfpack, JJ3, John Jackson III, that's where he ended up. Because that's who US, USC is playing the week after they give San Jose State a paycheck and a beatdown. So that's what we're going to talk about on tomorrow's episode of Locked on USC. Let's talk about which defensive position group is going to be the strongest this year on the Trojan roster. We know that the defensive line added Bear Alexander, Jack Sullivan, Anthony Lucas, and Keon Bars. The defensive line also returns a much bigger, stronger, and ready-to-play Solomon Tuliapupu, Tyrone Tulaney, Dejan Benton, and Sean Nua is going to get a chance to see what he can do with Corey Foreman and Devin Tompkins putting their hands in the dirt. So I think the defensive line is going to be, definitely has got a lot more depth with just the additions they brought in through the transfer portal. And the guys that I mentioned, I think are going to play a role rotational, uh, getting some rotational minutes. Behind them, well, not really behind them, as an extension of the defensive line, you've got the rush ends. Uh, I mentioned Anthony Lucas at defensive end or defensive line. He's also going to be playing rush end, so I'll throw his name in the mix here. But Roy Manning's group, you've got Sam Green, freshman, who, remember, they recruited him to play defensive line. He flashed big time this spring. I think they found a home for him. You're going to hopefully have back Romello Height and Solomon Burt healthy. And then they brought in through the transfer portal, Jamil Muhammad. We're going to have to wait and see what the freshmen look like, David, DJ, PV, and Braylon Shelby. But again, the group is much deeper compared to last year. What about the linebackers? Well, they've got to be a definite candidate for the, the strongest defensive position group. Uh, you, when you bring in Mason Cobb and you're adding in a freshman, Tackett Curtis, he still has some, you know, he's still learning the college game. But the depth now, 
with a healthy Shane Lee and a healthy Eric Gentry and a, and hopefully a fully utilized Rajon Davis, I think the linebacker group is going to be the group that benefits the most because of the defensive line. Then again, maybe the secondary is the strongest. It's, in my opinion, it's definitely the deepest as far as numbers. I mean, well, first of all, you just brought in another transfer in Traquan Fegans from Alabama. He's going to play safety. I think, well, the nickelback is a safety position, so I believe that's where the, they're going to slot him. Uh, but the, the as far as the safety group, very experienced. I mean, Caleb Bullock, Bryson Shaw, Max Williams. Those are the guys who saw a lot of run in 2022. This is the entire secondary for USC. You've got Damani Jackson, cornerback. I just mentioned Max Williams, Kalen Bullock. We're adding Zion Branch to the mix. You've got Jacoby Covington, who I think is going to be a star cornerback, possibly a cannon to leave early. You've got Anthony Beavers, again, another safety. Prophet Brown, cornerback. Christian Roland Wallace, another transfer, cornerback who came in from Arizona. Jalen Smith, Latrell McCutcheon, a couple of nickelbacks. Sia Wright, cornerback, not done yet, still going. Oh, how about Josh Jackson Jr.? We're going to see, I, I think he's off the roster right now. I don't think he's going to be on the roster. Fabian Ross, I mentioned Bryson Shaw, Zamarian Gordon. And then you've got Christian Pierce and uh, Malachi Crawford, a couple of freshmen. That's a deep group. So, which group is going to be the best? Man, I, I think everybody wants the defensive line to be the best because, again, it starts in the trenches. If that group is producing, doing their job, Everybody else behind them is going to benefit. The linebackers. They're going to have cleaner looks at tackling. Same thing with the safeties, the cornerbacks. If the defensive line is getting penetration and forcing quarterbacks to get rid of the ball sooner, that makes the secondary's job a lot easier. The shorter amount of time they have to cover, advantage USC. Go. I'll take a look at the offensive side of the ball on tomorrow's episode. See which group is the strongest. We're going to leave quarterback out of it because it's, it's kind of a, you know, if you're doing a curve, you got Caleb Williams and then you got everything else. So we're going to assume, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, quarterback is strong at USC. But what's the next strongest position group at U on offense? We'll talk about that on Locked on USC tomorrow. So until then, hey, I want to thank everybody for making Locked on USC their first listen every day. When you're done here, don't forget, go check out wersc.com. We've got that subscription special going. $29.99. That'll take you all the way through the end of fall camp, August 31st, as well as that first game. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. So until then, Everybody, you know what to do.